Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brittany, and I am back for this week's installments of Raising Special Kids Here With Families, Here For Families Facebook Live. Again, for those just noticing that alert on their phone, hop on to the Raising Special Kids Facebook page. Say hello in the chat. My name is Brittany, and I'm going to be talking about summer ideas this summer to keep our kids entertained. Um, I'm a family support specialist with Raising Special Kids, and I'm really happy to be here with you today. This is our Here With Families, Here For Families Facebook Live series. We've been doing this for a couple of months now, every Friday, and I've really enjoyed connecting with our community. So thank you for jumping on. And again, I am watching the chat, so you'll see me look down. If you have something to say, if you wanna say hi, if you wanna share an idea, please do so. It's more fun for me if these are interactive and it helps each other. It helps us connect and share ideas as a community um, of special needs parents. So thank you again. Today's theme is summer ideas for 2020. So before I get started, I do wanna update you on all things raising special kids. This week, we've been busy helping families per usual. We are all tele telecommuting at home and taking calls, helping families with things like um, special education, so prepping for next year, getting ready to communicate with that IEP team as we um, anxiously hold our breath to see what our school districts are going to be doing um, and getting our kids back to school. Some kids are um, receiving virtual um, extended school year services, and we have heard that some districts are even doing evaluations over the summer. So we're gratefully taking calls from parents coming on. And if, they, um, if you have questions about your child's special education services, please call us because we have time and we're ready to help you. We are also um, taking calls from families who um, have DDD and Arizona long-term care, long care services, excuse me, and for those wanting to apply and what that process looks like. We're helping families with behavioral health concerns, basic needs resources, you name it. Raising Special Kids is here for you, and we are um, all in this together trying to navigate this um, several months in of social distancing and COVID-19 um, concerns. So thank you again for hopping on. I see some people saying hi, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad you could join me today. So besides taking um, calls from families, as, you, as many of you know, um, we are hard at work doing virtual trainings. We do have an amazing event coming up I really wanna talk about for a little bit. It's called Summer School for Parents. It's Saturday, June 20th. It is an annual event we do every summer. And normally we have in-person trainings all, days, all day Saturday for parents and professionals. Well, as you can imagine, we're not doing group gatherings right now. And so we have gotten creative with how we are still wanting to continue to provide support to our community. We have um, polled you all. Many of you have participated in the survey I sent out a few weeks ago over social media, really trying to find out you know, what families wanna hear about um, in, this, in these trainings. So we've come up with a great day of classes in English and in Spanish. There'll be three classes each on topics like behavior support, you know, positive behavior techniques that you can use at home for your children who may be having some struggles given how much their lives have changed in the last few months. We'll be talking about um, special education, which is always a popular class, so please, please join that one. I know you'll learn a lot. We're also gonna be talking about parent professional collaboration. So how to communicate and work together with the professionals that come into your life. As you know, raising children with disabilities, you eventually have a whole team of people that work together with you to best support your child when navigating school, when na navigating therapies and DDD and all of the resources our kids have. We definitely need to um, nurture positive relationships with, our, with the professionals we interact with. So um, with that being said, I encourage you to head over to our website, raisingspecialkids.org and register. There's only one link for registration for summer school for parents. So instead of registering for a bunch of individual trainings, register for summer school for parents as a whole, and then just hop on when you can. Um, we'll let you know what times each class is. We will send you the login information. Um, it's gonna be really great, and we encourage you to hop on and join. You know, you've heard me say it before, guys, but when you're informed, you're empowered. And take this time over the summer when we have more time. We're not um, rushing and dealing with the grind of um, commuting to work or taking our kids places. Now is a good time as parents to educate ourselves. And summer school for parents is a great opportunity. And let's see if I can do this. We do have some giveaways. 
and I am going to show you um, one of the giveaways. Bear with me while I prop it up. So this is a giveaway you guys are gonna receive. It has all kinds of Raising Special Kids swag. There's gift cards, there's a phone charger, there's a mug, and I won't tell you all of it because it's a surprise, but lots of fun goodies that you can um, be entered into just by registering for Summer School for Parents. So when you register, we'll enter you in, and then my colleague and I, um, Saturday, June 20th, we'll be hopping on throughout the day to do the drawings over Facebook Live. So we're really trying to make it fun and interactive for our families um, listening in. And I know all of you want some Raising Special Kids gear to sport around the community. Um, so please, please register and learn with us. Something very cool we are also doing is we are having one-on-one -on -one consultation opportunities. Um, Brianna, thank you for your question. So yes, you have already registered, so you are entered. So crossing my fingers, maybe you'll be chosen for that giveaway. And if you are chosen, we will mail it to you. So you won't have to pick it up. Um, my colleague and I will get those mailed out. Um, and I'm very excited for whoever wins. And there's more than one. So watch Facebook Live and register for Summer School for Parents. Something else that is um, unique this year for Summer School for Parents is we are doing one-on-one -on -one consultations um, virtually via R Ring Central. So if you registered for classes and you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation, consultation, excuse me, with a family support specialist to talk about your child's individual needs, please let us know. Call our office. Our main number is 602-242-4366 and we can get you signed up. Staggered in between all of the trainings, we are having those one-on-one -on -one consultations and you need to call to get that scheduled because they are limited. And thank you, Ken, for asking. Registration is at raisingspecialkids.org. Look under events and training and go ahead and get registered. It will be an amazing day of learning. All of us are really ex excited and all of the Raising Special T Kids team is on deck to help make it a successful day, even virtually. So parents, sign up for that. So I admit, today I'm talking about um, opportunities um, to keep our kids busy and happy this summer. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks very different than when I prepared this information for families last year when we would email, email out resources. There is not a ton of camps, as you know, many have been um, either transferred to a virtual platform or not at all because of COVID-19 and we wanna keep our families um, safe, which is completely understandable. But we still have a summer ahead of us. And I'm a mother, I have three daughters, and I'm sure many of you feel like it's been summer for several months already, and we're in the thick of it, and we're trying, trying to um, entertain our children. So I still wanted to give you something. I still wanted to find some ideas of things that are open, and opportunities, and classes, and um, outings that you can do with your family to keep you busy and happy this summer. So one of my favorite resources, I did come up with a list, so I am going to be referring to it because there's there are some things I have found and I want to make sure families know about it. So Raising Arizona Kids, one of our favorite um, organizations, they are so good about keeping families informed on all things um, Arizona for children and families. They do have a summer um, calendar listing on their website and there are virtual opportunities. I just checked this morning and there are music camps, athletic camps, um, special needs specific camps, leadership camps, educational. Um, there is a lot out there. Now some of it is in person and um, the companies are saying they're practicing, you know, um, strict social distancing guidelines and encouraging masks and all of that. But again, you know, we we encourage you to reach out to that organization for details and make that decision on behalf of your family. We just want to point you to that um, resource if it's something you want to do. And there are also a lot of neat virtual things that even though our kids are at home, um, they can use technology to do something fun and keep them busy. So I encourage you to check out Raising Arizona Kids. They always, always have good resources. And they did post today, I noticed, that the Science Center is opening. Um, it is limited, so head to their website, um, the Science Center in Phoenix and they do have some um, tours and things you can sign up for. So that looked fun. I know my kids um, love that place. Um, Phoenix Out and About is another website that you can check out. They do have um, a calendar, an ongoing calendar of things to do with kids um, and families. So again, this summer, 
I'm a little nervous, I admit, as a parent about how I'm gonna entertain my children because our vacations have mostly been canceled. All the camps and activities that I had scheduled for them have been changed, but that's okay. We're thinking positive and we're gonna have a good summer. It just may look a little different than years past. Something great is that we live in a beautiful state and we have a lot of national parks and beautiful places to head outdoors. So please check um, the National Parks website. I looked at it this morning. It looks like the Grand Canyon is open, um, not every area. So I encourage, bef encourage you before you schedule a visit to check on these places' websites to make sure you're aware of what is open because it is admittedly more limited, but it is something that we can do. Um, I know that a lot of our lakes and our recreation areas and accessible hiking trails, a lot of them are open. And before it gets too hot, 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 we can check those out. And we also can head up north and get out of the heat a little bit and, and enjoy some of those beautiful places we have in our state where we can do things with our families. One of my family's favorite spots is in um, Sholo in Pine Top, Arizona kind of on the border of those cities, there is a um, hike along the rim and my daughter utilizes a wheelchair for transportation and she is even able to do it. So it's very um, accessible and it's a, it's a paved little path and you can go down um, and do that with your families and get a beautiful view of our Arizona forest. So you can show your friends and family that don't live in our state and let them know that we do have some beauty and some trees and some green um, here to enjoy. Um, Sedona is really beautiful right now. Um, I was there a couple weekends ago and there are a lot of beautiful um, trails and campsites and creeks and things that we can enjoy. Plus the endless other um, spots in our state that we can um, take our kids camping or go on nature hikes. Now I've noticed because of COVID-19, it's forced us to be more adventurous. And that's a good thing. We've, we're getting outside with our kids more and we're taking advantage of these beautiful places. And just a little tip, if, you're, um, if you have a member in your family who has a disability, you can go to our National Parks website and get a free pass. So go there, you know, search accessible pass. I believe you just have to pay for the shipping, which was very minimal. And that's nice because there are a lot of beautiful places um, that our children and loved ones with disabilities can enjoy too and we won't have to worry about the cost for those things. So um, I encourage you to check that out. Um, the zoo is open, so again, check their website. Um, there are, it's my understanding they are um, limiting admission and keeping us all safe and encouraging mask wearing, but of course you do what um, is best for your family. Um, some of the aquariums, I know Odyssey Aquarium is open. Um, let's see here, look at, I wanted to look at my list and see what I'm missing. Oh, um, the Boyce Arbitorium. So I always say that wrong, but it's as you're leaving um, the valley and you're headed to Superior, there's a beautiful little oasis on the side of the road and it's, uh, they have beautiful, all kinds of vegetation and because of all the shade, it's much cooler and it has a, an accessible trail, several of them that you can check out with your family. We did that a few weekends ago and we really enjoyed it. And it's, it's fun to be in all this vegetation that is not normally what we see in our, um, in our desert. So I encourage you to check that place out too, um, where you can safely do something as a family and not be you know cooped up in a, in a facility where we're worried about keeping our children safe from, from germs and having to wear a mask all day. Something else too, um, the Family Involvement Center, one of our favorite organizations to refer families to. I checked on their website this morning and it looks like they are having some camps, so I encourage you to contact them. Our Boys and Girls Clubs are also doing um, activities and things over the summer, so definitely look at your local chapters and many will um, help. For children who have disabilities, many will um, of course include them and adapt to their needs if, if they can handle that. And so that's great, it's, our, it's an opportunity for our kids to get some inclusion and be around their peers. There are, uh, water parks are, water parks are open. I'm told Sunsplash is open. Some of our fun resorts that have water slides like Arizona Grand or the Hilton Hotels, some of those are open um, with their water slides. And again, they have their own safety guidelines on their website, but often you can find a good deal and head over and do a staycation with your family. So there are things to do. We just may have to be a little more creative Something my kids um, are doing, and it's probably a little mom enforced, but that's okay. I um, have them do the reading program through the local public libraries, libraries. And right now you can reserve books online and then the branch by my home, you can drive and pick them up. But as they read, they can earn prizes and it just keeps them 
from having so much screen time, even though I know some of it we can't avoid, but it helps them um, meet learning goals and reading goals and keep their minds um, actively working. Another resource that I loved that I discovered a couple weeks ago, actually, from a family I was helping at Raising Special Kids, they told me about a resource called Camp Kinda. It's C-A-M-P and then K-I-N-D-A, so Camp Kinda. Um, they have this wonderful website and you can sign up for free. And it's really good for, you know, probably elementary to middle school aged. And it has free resources and a literal summer camp that they email you. And then every day you get um, suggestions and ideas for your children to do at home interactively. And it's been great. You know, yes, my kids are using screen time, which I'm sure I'm not the only one because I work and I have a family and sometimes we have to balance it all out. But I've loved the resources that Camp Kinda has um, emailed to my inbox every week. And then my kids can jump on. So they had a week where they learned about Egypt and they watched documentaries and did interactive games and did a treasure hunt in my house. So there are a lot of companies out there that are really trying to provide resources and support for us to entertain our children at home. And I love Camp Kinda because it's free. So check it out. Um, again, Google Camp and then K-I-N-D-A. It's super fun. And one thing I love about it too is it's easy for our children to navigate. You know, once you show them how to jump on their website, you don't have to sit with them every second to help them utilize the fun activities and tools. They can do it on their own. So that's my little shout out. Now, um, I am gonna take a little pause though and just recognize the fact that this summer may be a little tricky. You know, we are used to being busy. Our kids are probably used to doing swim lessons and summer camps and volunteer opportunities and a lot of that has gone away. And there are some signs that we need to be looking out for um, for our children who may be struggling just to keep our eyes out because sometimes children may not express their anxiety or their fears like an adult would, you know, they won't have a conversation like you and I, you and our audience are right now, you know, talking about how we feel and how we're doing. They sometimes will have behaviors. And so I just wanted to share some of these that I um, pulled off of the Child Mind Institute just for some tips to um, be watching out for. So if our children are struggling with the isolation and changes with COVID-19, some of the signs may be they're snapping at you. You know, it's natural to be a little more irritable when um, things have changed and you're frustrated. Um, and it's just really good to encourage your kids, you know, talk to me, talk to mom, talk to dad. We understand you're human and we understand it can be frustrating. Sometimes children will fall into old patterns or habits, especially our children who really rely on structure. You know, they may, na may no longer have their ABA therapist coming to their home or their respite provider may not be providing services right now and things have flipped upside down. And so just keep in mind that if their behaviors are changing, it could be a sign of anxiety or frustration. And thank you for those commenting. Hello, Jill, Angelica, Claudia, Anna, Brianna, everyone chiming on and saying hello. I'm glad you guys are participating. And I'm hoping you're finding a few fun ideas to write down to um, keep in your pocket for when those summer days seem long and we need to entertain our kiddos. Um, back to our little checklist of habits and behaviors to look out for. Um, if their sleeping or eating patterns change, just keep an eye on it. You know, if they're sleeping too much or not enough or having a hard time sleeping at night, maybe they need some more opportunities to get their energy out, which will in turn relieve stress, help them cope, just have a, you know, a whirlwind effect on many of those struggles. Um, overdoing screen time. This is a hard one. You know, I'm a mom and I have three daughters and two of them are, te two are teenagers and they miss their social interaction time. So often it can be hard for me to enforce the um, screen time rules that we normally have. And you know your children, you have your own house rules, but just keep in mind that if they're overusing it, it's gonna make them not feel good. I don't know about you all listening in, but when I'm on screen time, which I realize I am now, but at night if I stay up too late scrolling social media or I'm looking at Pinterest too much, you know, after a while it gives me a headache or it makes me feel unproductive. So if our kids are overdoing it, just encourage them to take breaks. Um, if our little ones are more clingy than usual, that may be a sign of anxiety. So just keep that in mind and give them that reassurance and just remind them, you know, we are spending time together and it's gonna be okay. Some remedies for some of these um, struggles I've brought up are um, of course, time together. You know, many of us that have multiple children, it's awesome to schedule, you know, mom and daughter dates, dad and son dates and vice versa, just to let them know they're loved and they're special. That could even mean, you know, right now there's not a ton to do, but you know, driving through and getting a slushie or just 
um, taking a walk together. Those times are important and it helps our kids heal and it gives an opportunity for us to talk to our kids, especially having teenagers, you know, having that one-on-one -on -one time gives me a chance to see how they're doing. We can teach them coping strategies and ways to do self-care, which I know sometimes um, as a special needs mom, when I hear the word self-care, it makes me chuckle because who has time for that? But really, we need to make time for it, even if it's a really small little thing like taking a shower by ourselves or reading 10 minutes of a book we've been wanting to finish each day. And our kids, you know, we can think of ways that they can cope and think of activities that they love to do. And just remember, if your kids are struggling this summer because life is very different and schedules and family activities and all of that is very different, remember, remember that they're resilient. I keep telling myself this in my mind, but our kids are going to be okay. They're tougher than we are many times, especially our little heroes with disabilities, young and old. They just have a way of adapting and learning and dealing with adversity better than anyone on the planet. And so our kids are going to be okay. And if our summer looks different this year, it's, it's fine. We're learning and growing together. But I hope I've given you some ideas to at least, you know, come up with some things to make the summer days not seem so long. So I did want to do a little rundown before I close this Facebook Live today with a master list of activities that you can do on the fly. And I'm going to get started. So here we go. Read a book, call a friend, exercise, reconnect, host a virtual hangout, learn a new language, family dinner every night. That's one of my favorite ones. That's actually a blessing COVID-19 has brought to our family indirectly. It's just more family time together. Write in a journal, spring clean your house, declutter the house, plant a garden, fix things around the house that are broken, spend one-on-one -on -one time with each of your kids, work on your budget, start a little side hustle. So if there's a, a talent or hobby you have and you've wanted to turn that into a business, now if you have time, go for it. Um, have a movie night, write letters to friends and family, do arts and crafts with the kids, have a little spa night, um, go swimming, Skype or Zoom with family. Um, find some online activities. There's so many virtual activities, it's endless. Go to raisingspecialkids.org and look at our COVID-19 resources. We have tons of fun links to activities and educational and just fun for our children to do at home. Do a puzzle, sing karaoke, make a scrapbook, try a new recipe, learn a new skill, binge watch a new TV series. Let's be honest, I've been doing that. I'm pretty good at it. Um, paint something, rearrange your room in your house, build a blanket fort with the kids, go for a walk, celebrate a holiday, have breakfast for dinner, um, color in a coloring book. There's adult ones out there, moms and dads, so you can jump on with your kids and do that. Bake, there's so much more. But really, as parents, I think we're going to have to get creative this summer. We're going to have to find ways to engage our kids at home so that way we can all have some happiness and some memories as we're still home social distancing now, there are opportunities out in the community and I have shared a bunch of them with you, but as always, we encourage you to contact each organization and see what their um, safety guidelines are and then make that decision um, for your family. There are um, some you know, musical theater places that are still doing camps um, and things like that. Some of the school districts are doing some things over the summer. So just you know, go online, check them out, see what's available, and then you make that decision on what's best for your kiddos. And as always, Raising Special Kids is here for you. If you need advice or support on anything, you know, disability related, family related, parenting related, we are here for you. All of us that work here are touched by a disability and many, many of our staff are special needs parents as well. And we are in the thick of this with you and we're learning together. Again, I hope to quote unquote, see many of you um, register for summer school for parents. It will be so worth your time, a wonderful day of learning and a time for us, you know, to take time away from our day and empower and educate ourselves. There's going to be fun giveaways, so don't forget to register. And if you were interested in that one-on-one -on -one consultation, it will be face-to-face -face through a platform called Ring Central. If you were interested in that, you need to register for Summer School for Parents and then call our office. Our main number is 602 242-4366 and the Raising Special Kids team is ready and willing to help you with any concern that you have. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Find something to do with your kids, venture into nature, but whatever you do, be safe, happy, and healthy. And we are here from you, here for you, and I will talk to you next week. Take care.